Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to the Elevate Consciousness podcast. Today I'm going to talk about the final episode of Better Call Saul. So I think the ultimate thing about Better Call Saul, the ultimate climax, is really finding out that he is a good man, Saul Goodman. He is actually a good man. In the end, he shows you his true character that he is good. And what do we learn from this episode? Not only that he's good, but he truly is a mastermind genius that has these emotional problems, these emotional hangups. Essentially, we realize what is his problem is that he blames all of his issues on other people and he never takes accountability for it. And he's smart enough where he could actually have whatever he wanted. He has the intelligence. He's the mastermind, the manipulator. He understands people. He knows how to pull their strings. He knows how to negotiate with them. Mainly, he does that by finding out what they want and finding a way to deliver it to them. Essentially, he is a good man. And he even uses this goodness to manipulate people. He actually does like and care about people. And we get that sense from him. That's why he's very likable. We do like him and people like him because they can sense that he likes them back. You can feel when somebody likes you. He uses this likability in order to manipulate people to do things that are morally questionable, to take advantage of situations and people. He couldn't just let Howard go. He had to bring him down. Why? Because he partly blamed Howard for what he went through. He blamed his brother. It's everyone's fault except for his. He is the mastermind genius, and this is proved by the fact that he's able to only get seven years with ice cream every Friday. It's almost like he just did that to show you that he can. Now, why does he not go through with it? The second he finds out that Kim is in trouble, he flips his whole plan because he finds out that Kim could lose everything she has in a civil suit. So what does he do? He decides to take all the blame upon himself because essentially he is a good man. He's a man of love. That's what he did. He's the mastermind. He's the genius. He even masterminded manipulating Kim, making her think that he's going to actually get her into trouble. But that was all a ruse because he knew she would show up because he is a genius. He's the puppet master. He understands people. Where does his name Saul come from? So it comes from King Saul of the Hebrew Bible, who's interesting because he is a guy that was a low-level soldier that rose to become king. And as Saul Goodman, he's like the king of the criminals, right? He's got all the criminals' respect. He's seen as a kind of godfather, where if you're a criminal, you want Saul Goodman on your side. And the story goes that King Saul, he falls on his own sword and kills himself. So Saul, taking all this blame, taking the the 80 years or whatever, is like him falling on his own sword. Why? So he could take control of the situation. And that's also what happened in the Hebrew Bible, is that King Saul, he fell on his own sword so that the enemy could not capture him and control him, torture him. And Saul also, he fell on his own sword in order to protect Kim. Also, Saul in the Hebrew Bible is described as goodly. So that's also interesting. There is this other aspect of The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, and it's a book that can be seen a few times throughout the series, and we see it in the end. And this relates to the whole thing about Saul asking Mike and Walter White about if they could go back in time, could they change anything? In his answers to them, he's kind of showing that he's not ready to take accountability for his own life, his own decisions, for the consequences of his actions. We see that Mike does take accountability for the things that he did that ended up hurting people. And we see Walter White, like Saul, both of them not taking accountability. So they blame others, and in this blame, they are amoral, they could be considered evil. Because of this belief, it allows them to take selfish actions which put others in harm's way. This time machine theme also. The whole show is like a time machine because you're jumping around to all these different parts in Jimmy's life, right? And the present 
is seen as black and white, which is kind of strange because usually in film and movies, black and white is usually seen as the past. But in this case, the past is in color. The present is black and white. And I believe that is because in the present, you know, his dream of being this great kind of guy, you know, living the dream or whatever, right? Having all the riches is over. And so now he had to face the truth. He had to face this black and white, very stark reality. The climax of which is him facing himself, facing his own shadow, taking accountability. Once he does take accountability, it's almost like there's a sense of forgiveness. So it it reminds me of the story of the prodigal son from the Bible. The main point of that story is that even if you turn, if you go the wrong way spiritually, morally, whenever you turn back, there is some forgiveness. And his forgiveness is that for him, jail is probably not going to be that bad. Why? Because he has all the respect of the criminals, him being King Saul, him being king of the criminals. He has that plus the fact that, again, he is the genius, super mastermind, puppet master, manipulator. Again, he was a good man. He has all these funny ways of showing this this goodness and connecting with people, even when he wasn't going to go back to Cinnabon. Does he really have to call them back and say, you know, hey, I'm not coming in? No, but he does because he does have this consideration. So that's pretty much it. I think it's a really great show. There's a lot of thought and detail put into it. Who is actually a bigger genius? Is it Walter White or is it Saul? Because Walter, he had all the chess moves planned out and Saul is kind of like a very similar character. There are these both mastermind geniuses that had these emotional issues where if they just had the emotional groundedness and healing, they could have accomplished anything. But because they just had this very human pettiness, you know, and they could not let go and they could not forgive, then they could never fully reach their full potential. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Everyone, peace up and elevate consciousness constantly.